Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to share a video today of all of my plants that I'm growing. I have plants out on the deck, downstairs on my walkout patio. I also have some inside and window sills. And so I'm gonna actually just walk you through and show you all the plants that I'm growing this summer. Basically a container garden tour. I really do pretty much grow all in pots. And I have a raised bed that's about like three feet by six feet long. So I will show you guys that too. And then before the end of summer, I will do a summer decor walkthrough before I switch over to fall. I'm gonna start out on the deck. I will give little tips along the way. And if you have any other tips to add on any of the plants that we talk about today, then go ahead and add those in the comments too. Plants are a journey and you cannot expect perfection. Just learn as you go. You're going to kill plants, it's okay. Google is your friend, YouTube is your friend. So if you're new and this seems like a lot of plants, I'm gonna show you guys probably about, I don't know, 30 plants or so. There's a lot of plants in this video. So grab your cup of coffee and let's head out to the deck. Right now we're using this English lavender as my centerpiece. This has become one of my favorite things to grow and this pot is about, 15 inches wide and this is um, three different plants. So I just kind of put them in a triangle and they were really, really small when I got them and it just filled out a lot faster that way. So I've done two in the past, but I did three this year. You wanna make sure if you are going to grow lavender that you get English lavender if you're wanting to use it for culinary purposes. There might be some other different types that are okay for culinary purposes, but um, some types are not safe. I love just picking this off. I don't know, I would say five or six, like half sprigs and I add it to my lemonade overnight and it is delicious as a lavender lemonade. It's like one of my favorite summer treats. I shared that over on my Instagram, but this is doing so well. One tip with lavender is that you don't want to let it flower. When you start seeing those buds, um, you want to pinch them off and not let it flower. Just even though it's really beautiful when it does flower, it grows pretty tall and it's um, obviously light purple blooms. But if you are wanting to use it for culinary purposes, I read that you should not let it flower so I just kind of keep pinching off here as I want a lemonade which is a lot over the summer it likes full Sun it does not like to be over watered so less frequently and more deeply so like I would say like twice a week very deeply um, when it's really really hot outside I have been giving it just like a little bit each day but in general you definitely don't want like wet soppy soil with this you want to let it kind of get dried out and it does like full Sun Last year this stand was completely full of plants, but this year we actually got these benches, four of them from a neighbor for free. We ended up lining the deck with three of them and using them for pots. And then there's one outside in our front yard for the landscape that actually holds my geraniums. Um, so this is um, some sweet basil. This is just your run of the mill main like sweet basil. It's doing well. I did buy this as a larger plant. I bought this other basil here which is sweet Genevieve's basil as a small, very small, probably only like five inch baby plant. So you can see it has caught up pretty nicely. And I love growing basil. It does well through the summer. You wanna pinch the leaves off in twos. So when you're pinching those off, you wanna pinch them down in twos and they grow, as you can see, they'll start sprouting little new growth and you do want to remove any damaged leaves on basil um i did end up having some sort of pest eating all of my basil just a couple of days ago and i ended up mixing up my own um organic fertilizer to kill those off so you do also not want to let the basil flower it will have like white flowers on it and that will ruin the flavor so you do want to pick those off before they flower i've found that basil likes full sun can do okay in part sun definitely thrives when the temperatures get a little bit warmer in the beginning of the growing season if it gets down to like the 40s you really have to bring it in or really stunt its growth or kill it but my basil is doing really really well i love using this when we're cooking been one of my favorite herbs to grow so that's why we got two this year just have a little pot with some zinnias i bought a whole lot i think is what they call it of white zinnias i usually put them out front but this year because we moved some of our sprinklers we needed to move locations so i ended up putting them some in pots and you guys will see some down below as well after we finish up with the deck i'll show you guys the homemade not fertilizer but pesticide i, I think i said fertilizer that um i made to get whatever was eating on my basil off. And I can tell today already that it's not eating it anymore. 
Um, so that's great. And I guess you have to spray it every week, but I'll show that to you after we are done with the deck. Um, any herbs really like a little bit of a mist midday, especially if it's really hot outside. So definitely get like a good little misting bottle. You don't need anything fancy. It doesn't have to be one of the fancy misters, but just like a little like spray bottle, put it on the mist option. And this here is my spearmint. This is one of my favorite things to grow in the summer because I love mojitos. And as you can see, there are some white spots on there. Um, these are, I believe, spider mites. I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, if you know in the comments, I sprayed this as well with my pesticide that I mixed up. The one thing with mint that you don't want to do that I learned the hard way last year is that you want to give it a large enough space. And I'm wondering if this one is root bound. It grows like a weed and it can really get root bound very quickly. And if you are ever going to grow like multiple mint plants, make sure they have their own container. Do not plant them in the same container because one just basically chokes the other out. Mint likes more cool temperatures than basil, but it does um, do okay in full sun and it really produces a lot. It grows very, very quickly. I have this mint which is the spearmint and then down here I have Colonel Kentucky mint and this one was a little bit harder to grow in the beginning but now it seems like it's thriving so but it must like the hotter temperatures more than the other one um, but they like moist soil not soppy soil they do well with sun I would say they would prefer part shade when it's really hot outside but definitely make sure that you don't let mint dry out and then we have right here this is lemon balm and this is actually my, I would say, a lot less healthy than last year. Lemon balm is an herb, but I can't remember if I read that it was more like basil or more like mint. It kind of looks more like mint, but I thought I remember that it was more like basil as far as like how you care for it. I try to group my herbs and anything like kind of in groupings of like likes more water, likes more sun, makes it easier to remember. But lemon balm is a natural, um, insect repellent but it grows very easy i got it in like probably like a two inch little plant for a couple bucks and it filled out this pot really easy um it is an insect repellent i would not say that it completely like we used to use this as our centerpiece in order to repel insects and it does not like touch the mosquitoes in the late summer so um also right here we have some more white zinnias this is just two of them. Um, zinnias and pots, like I've just noticed, very hardy in our zone, we're in Missouri, but um, you don't have to water them a lot if they're in the ground. Like they will be totally fine during the heat of summer. They actually thrive in the heat and they bush out, which is really great. Anytime the bloom starts to get like brown, this one barely got it, but like brown edges on it, what I do is I just pinch a little bit off like that and then it'll bush out more. I think when these are in containers, they do need a little bit more water just because there's not as much like reserve in a container as there is in the ground, but they do really, really well um, all the way through at the beginning of fall. Okay, and this one is a story. This is like my corner piece over here. These are tomatillos. I have never grown tomatillos before. I took my niece to the nursery this year, so I was really distracted. I was like walking through with her. I bought way more plants than I usually do. I just wasn't really like paying attention. And so, because I had her there with me and we were just enjoying it so much and I just filled an entire flat of like peppers, all these different things that like I really didn't know how to grow. And it's been fun. Um, most of the things have done really well. Um, but the tomatillos were brand new for me and they had them on an end cap and it said high yield and I was like oh like that would be fun like salsa verde all that if you don't know what a tomatillo is it's kind of a mix between like a tomato and a pepper but it said high yield and so I was like okay that'll be fun like let's do that um, and so I picked it up a week or two after I watched this YouTube video and this gardener was like you have to have two plants because they're not self-pollinating and I was like, okay, there should have been a sign. And then my mom was like, you have two plants because there's like two main stems of my thing. Maybe the nursery thought of that and put two together, but that wasn't the case. I only have one, the two are um, very connected. Anyways, so I was kind of bummed because I was like, basically what will happen if they don't get pollinated is that they will just flower, 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 and then you'll never get any fruit. I was like, crap, this really stinks. And you have to like tap, I guess. Anyways, I've never grown them before. If you have tomatillo tips, please put them in the comments. I would love that if you've um, got some experience with that. So I went back to the nursery and the girl that worked there was like, no, they're self-pollinating, you'll be fine. And so I was like, oh, okay, weird. 
all right. Well, I swear that guy said that, but all right. <laughs> Came back home and I started Googling things again and it did say that you need to. So there must be conflicting opinions. See, we have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of little yellow flowers. And then those little yellow flowers, they become this like little like husk. I didn't think we were gonna get any fruit. I'm still not positive. However, I found one area that looks very promising. These still feel relatively empty, but those are pretty big husks. Some like significant huskage over here. And I will say also I've noticed that the bees have been pollinating this like crazy. Anyways, I'm wondering if the bees can pollinate this. Um, if you guys know in the comments, please let me know because I really, really hope that this is going to result in a tomatillo. Apparently what happens is the plant grows the flower, then it grows the husk, and then the fruit comes in, and then you know the fruit is ready to harvest when it starts like kind of busting out of the husk. I'm hoping those fill up, because if that works, then we may have a lot of tomatillos. Okay, over here we just have two big hostas my mom gave me a couple years ago, and they have become like jungle hostas, and then there's a hydrangea there that's a bobo hydrangea that I didn't think was gonna come back, and it did. It's not like the healthiest. If you guys follow me over on Instagram, you'll remember I got this wheelbarrow. And I planned on putting it where the hydrangea is. It says town and country on it. I got it on Marketplace, so cool. Um, but what I wanted to do with this is make like a flower cut garden so that I can make my own bouquets, and I just honestly kind of got overwhelmed I just thought that was such a cool piece it's a little bit rusty all by itself but my plan was to set like different pots down into it and then have like flowers that I can then make my own bouquets with I might do that next year and that is my whole deck so those are all the plants I like to keep my herbs up here and anything that needs to kind of be babied up here on the deck so let's go ahead and go inside and I'll show you guys the pesticide Okay, so this spray bottle is what I used for my pesticide that was just like homemade. And you can see I still have quite a bit in here. And what I did was I filled it up to about here with water. And then I put in just a cap full of this neem oil, trolls black spot, powdery mildew, rust, spider mites, all different types of different things. Just a cap full of that, actually a little bit less than a cap full, I'd say like a regular size cap full, about a teaspoon, and then eight drops of peppermint oil. Then I just let it settle and added just a little bit of Dawn dish soap. And I would just say one squirt, like it would be probably a teaspoon. And then I shook it up. The video I watched said that if you shake it up and it's not foamy and like the oil still separates, then you need a little bit more Dawn dish soap. You can spray this on them about once a week. What you wanna do is not do it during the heat of the day, do it in the evening when the sun's down, and then in the morning, go ahead and water them like you usually would. So that is my organic homemade pesticide. Not too hard to make, very easy. Let's keep that in there. Okay, and then in this mudroom, this is kind of like a garden themed room, honestly. I just have this one little hosta. I had this really cool pot from Terrain. Just wanted to like keep it inside as like decor. And, um, and it matches this other little pot that I keep um, some of my things in. So anyways, this is just a hosta, two mouse years hosta. And it doesn't need a lot of sun. I try to water it about once a week and it's done fine. I just wanted a little something to kind of grow here. I am going to be transferring all of like my garden notes into this little Archer and Olive book. Just everything that I've learned about each plant so far. This is like a bullet journal so I can go back and like have a table of contents and look it up. But I also recommend keeping your tags. You can see some of my tags were still in the plants, but keeping your tags year to year um, because if you need to go back and read about the plants, like the specific varieties that you have, then you have them all in one spot. So before we head down to the walkout basement, which is where I have tomatoes, peppers, and a few more plants, I'm gonna show you guys what I have in my kitchen windowsill, which is one of my favorite little spots. I think it's just so charming to have um, little pots in my windowsill and it's kind of escalated. I've got two, four, six in the, in the windowsill. I used to have like three, two, something like that, but um, they're super cute. Okay, so here's the windowsill. And as you can see, it's pretty full of plants, but we'll start over here. This one I just added, it started with an E, Echinacea, Echinia, I don't know, but E-C-H something. I did use succulent soil, 
All of these plants need to be watered very, very little, which is very, very nice. Always water around the rim, never on the leaves with succulents. It's a tip if you're new to that, don't water on the leaves, it makes them rot. So water around the rim and they like thorough watering, very low frequency. So water all the way through. Water can actually pool up in here and cause like mold underneath it. So it's actually good to kind of like let it sit on top of the drying rack. And a lot of times when succulents look like they need water, they're actually overwatered. If you need an easy way to remember how to water succulents, try to think of like the desert. It doesn't rain very often, but when it does, it drenches them. Obviously in the desert, they get water on their leaves, but they prefer not to. So most of them anyway. This jade plant I have had for a really long time. It's just stayed almost exactly the same. And as soon as I pour water into it, it comes right out the bottom. Probably needs some more soil, I don't know but I just really love it in that pot and I love it that size. So I've just kept it just like that and it still seems to be happy. So that is totally fine. That one back there, I don't know. It seems to not be as happy. Oh, you know what? I think this is actually the one my niece and nephew sent me. So let's check in on this. They sent us a succulent like gift in the mail. So, oh yeah, there's, oh no, it died. Oh no. We will try to find a twin for that. Um, this is curly parsley and I grew this from seed and I do mist it and I do try to keep this one with the soil moist. I did this from seed, like I said, so it's going to take forever before um, I can actually harvest it. This branch looks to be doing a little bit better, but it's just going to take forever to be honest. So I like buying the ones that are already started at the um, nursery, but since I had some parsley seed that went ahead and just threw them in this empty pot and thought, what the heck, let's just try it out and see what we can get and put it in the windowsill. I like to keep a spritzer right here on the um, countertop during the summer for my herbs. Like I told you guys, I will go out there during the middle of the day and spritz them with water. Use this darker amber glass one just so that that way I know that the one that I'm using is pure water because I have. I'll just show you really, really quick what is on our front doorstep. I have um, these really large white begonias and um, we bought one huge pot and split it in half, half in one planter and then half in the other. And at first it looked horrible. And um, then what we did is we got this viney plant to fill in the front. And this is called, I think, Tolinia, Tolinia, something like that. Um, but it's a really beautiful like purple flower and that has really filled in the planters So now they kind of look a little bit more even and all filled in so as what we have out front So let's go ahead and head down to the walkout basement. So here is our walkout patio area um, Over here. I have this long planter box with um, I think I put seven zinnias in there white zinnias and they've done really, really well. A lot better than the smaller pots went before I took them upstairs. Uh, these have really bushed out nicely and filled up the planter. They always look so pretty going into fall. I'm really excited to see how they look at the end of August. They'll be pretty bushy by then. Okay, in these two terracotta pots, we just got these two cheapy pots. These were like 14 bucks each. Um, we planted these, um, I think they're called ping pong balls and they attract butterflies and they really honestly have been pretty low maintenance. I did some pruning in the beginning just to make sure that they bushed out, but I really didn't do too much after that. And they definitely do like to stay watered, but just have two of those kind of framing out the doorway in the terracotta pots. I thought those were so cute. On our little coffee table here, we have red begonias. They really don't take a lot of water. Um, and they don't like water on their leaves, similar to succulents. Make sure that you're keeping all the leaves healthy, like how it coordinates with our other terracotta pots. So it kind of brings it all together. So we're gonna head over here to my tomatoes and peppers. First up is this very spicy, super hot chili. These things thrive. I mean, they just produce and produce like so many peppers. I harvest them when they're about this size, which is about like maybe inch and a half but you can leave them on they will sometimes turn red some of them just come out red but they are so great and they do like the soil to stay um, well watered but they can dry out as well they're one of my favorite things to grow so i will grow these every year and we do add them to salsa but this version was a lot hotter than last year so we must have got a little bit hotter of a variety but i just love that plant i think it's so cute i have three husky cherry tomatoes i love cherry tomatoes they're one of my favorite things to grow um, this plant is what's called a bushy determinate 
So determinate meaning will grow to a determined height and that is it. And that looks like all three of them have pretty much almost achieved that. That one in the middle, I actually paid like 20 bucks for at um, the hardware store and it was a little bit more established. Producing a ton of fruit and really great size. And these are sweet in flavor. These two, this one right here and that one, I bought as little tiny babies. Like I'm talking like five, six inches tall. They have a ton of flowers. These flowers obviously turn into fruit and the fruit that is coming up looks really, really good. It's really hot outside. I do try to water them almost every day, but they do like deep watering, like water it all the way through, Not watering directly at the root and drenching that. You don't want that. They can get root rot here. That's kind of where I aim. When you do that, what it does is it forces the roots to reach for the water. So that's why um, you wanna do it that way. Especially in the beginning, it's really important that you don't drench them at the root because they need to start building those strong roots. So those are my tomatoes. I'm picking about four or five a day right now between those plants and hopefully if I give <laughs> This one a little fertilizer will start getting more. Okay, and then finally my pepper garden. This is um, a box from Westlake Hardware that I got this year. Um, we grew poblanos, serranos, sweet peppers, and bell peppers, like red bell peppers. Um, this is a poblano plant. It's doing well. You guys can see my dead bushes in the background. We don't even know what to do with those. And there's a snake that lives in there and I'm not touching them. But anyways, they are producing peppers up at the top. Um, but I actually did a little experiment. Planos are a hot pepper and some videos said to top them off, meaning when they're like a little bit younger, you cut the top off and let them, and then they will split. And some videos said, don't do that because that will stunt the growth. I did a little experiment. I've got two identical of the same plant. This one right here, it has little tiny baby fruits at the top. Um, and this one, and look at these, you guys, holy cow. And they said that in zones with a shorter growing season said you would get smaller fruit but obviously that is not true because these are huge this is like five inches big so we're gonna put this in our eggs tonight i'm so 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 excited those look delicious actually topping off if you live in the midwest i think is best um, this is a serrano plant here it is growing fruit they're very small little skinny guys I thought serrano peppers were larger but these are pretty small there's several of them though so that is going sort of well, but not as well as the poblano. Um, and then this next one is called sweet pepper. So they're kind of like those peppers that come in the bags at the grocery store. And I did eat some with my hummus. I actually harvested like three the other day and I ate them and they were still pretty tough. I think I might've picked them a little bit early. So um, you can see when I have one right there and then another one down here, good size, but I don't think that they're quite ready. So I'm gonna let them kind of hang out on there for a little bit longer. This one over here is my bell pepper plant. And you guys, I will show you up when we go up back up to the kitchen because we're gonna use it for our eggs tonight. But we grew like a full blown bell pepper. This one looks like it's got a little deformity to it. But it was like probably three inches by three inches. I'll show you guys when we go up to the kitchen. But this one's called Red Beauty. So I don't think you're supposed to harvest it until it gets red. I went ahead and harvested it just because I wanted it to produce more. And as you can see, there's a lot of like flowers up here. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get peppers out of all of those. But it does seem to be promising. So the peppers have really liked this garden bed. Got it at Westlake Hardware. Um, it's just a couple hundred bucks. It was a lot of soil to fill it and the liner came with it So we did line it with that we filled it with garden soil, which I guess is not the best But we did mix in quite a few things and next year. I'm definitely going to be adding more peat moss. So those are all of my Peppers and we did do some rearranging out here. This isn't new furniture We just the love seat over here to this side we can move it around if we have a party But when it's just the two of us, we really like to use these like swivel chairs a lot more We have cushions inside, but we bring them in This is a lot more like nice to sit out here with the ottoman and the swivel and rocker chairs So we just kind of rearrange that now with all the plants. It's very very peaceful out here felt a lot more like private and peaceful to sit out here and enjoy. We've only done one fire, but we need to do more for sure. Okay, so here is the little bell pepper that we picked. Again, it's called Red Beauty. 
so it probably was a little bit early to pick this, but we're gonna use it in our eggs with our poblanos tonight. And just to give you guys an idea, these are the sweet peppers that I was talking about. My sweet peppers were more about like this size. So we're gonna use a little bit of all of this, and then we'll also toss in the couple cherry tomatoes that I harvested and some of these um, super hot chilies as well. And I have to be a little bit careful on those, cook them long enough or they are very, very spicy. But we're gonna use all of this in our eggs tonight with some ham and some cheese and just have a nice breakfast for dinner. So I'm really excited about that and thank you guys so much for coming along with me. After this video goes live, I will have a couple videos coming, a thrift books haul. I know you guys love books. We talk books all the time over on my Instagram. I'll put my Instagram right here if you're not following me over there. If you love getting good deals on used books, we talk books like constantly. We're all obsessed with thrift books. There's always a link in the description box because you can get free books cheap books. Just don't pay a lot of money for books. It's just such a great site. So there will be a video coming up on that. And also I will be doing a summer home tour video as well. And even if that's the end of summer before I take it all down and go into fall, it will be coming here on my channel. I'm going to try to make it happen as quickly as I can. And I'll try to make that one my next video. I also have some antiques that I found and I would love to make a video on that as well. I'm just so slow at editing. Sometimes I share it over on stories. If you guys want more like live time behind the scenes, I'm always very active on Instagram stories. So that's the best place to kind of see the behind the scenes. Thank you guys so much for watching today and I hope you're having a great summer. And if you are not ready to stop watching and you want another video, here's a video to watch. Click here to go watch that and I will see you guys over there. Bye.